Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Andrew and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, first of all, I'd like to say thank you to all the subscribers and new subscribers coming on to my channel. Uh, more than likely you found my channel because you use Clip Studio Paint and you want to figure out some how to use some of the tools in Clip Studio Paint. Uh, so thank you for subscribing and, and welcome. The, the other thing I want to say is that I know I haven't posted a video in a very long time. Uh, all I can say is that real life has been very busy. So I rarely have free time to post videos. The other reason I haven't posted is because I think I've pretty much covered um, most of Clip Studio Paint's tools. Uh, so if you go through my library of videos, you can find some type of tutorial that I've made um, explaining how to use the tools. Um, and if you if you uh, don't see one, um, then feel free to message me on any of my videos. Just leave a message and I will try if I can find some time to uh, either respond in the comments or make a tutorial video. Now, as I said, making tutorial videos has become very difficult uh, in the past year because I don't have uh, a lot of free time anymore. Um, but in any case, um, I just wanted to make this video to update uh, my subscribers and any new subscribers coming on that, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much tapped out on uh, Clip Studio Paint tutorial videos on how to use the tools. Um, I am aware that uh, as of making this video, um, March 12th, uh, 2022, Clip Studio has released a, a, an update that introduced some new tools like a liquefied tool and some uh, basic uh, 3D creation. You can actually create 3D objects in Clip Studio Paint, uh, really basic stuff. Um, I, that update uh, was released not too long ago. I might make a video on those. I have not used those tools, um, but uh, again, my free time is very limited. Um, so I'm making this video because somebody in the comments uh, asked, they wanted to know how you can draw uh, you know, muscular uh, superheroes, I guess, or muscular bodies. How do I do it and, and stuff like that. So. Um, first of all, let me say that I'm not a big fan of, of drawing tutorials because um, there are so many different styles that artists um, use. It, it's really hard. Like if you see a tutorial from, uh, let's just pick a, a very popular YouTuber uh, like David Finch. Um, he has a lot of tutorials on how to draw on his channel and um, and that's great and all but I, I, um, the, the, his type of style is not something I'm interested in so and that's what he's pretty much teaching is his style because that's the way he draws and so I'm not a huge fan of, 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 uh, of uh, how to draw certain things uh, the other guy is uh, Robert, um, I can't pronounce his last name, but he, he goes by Ram Studios, uh, Ram Studio Comics. Uh, again, he has that very 90s uh, cross-hatching style. Uh, again, not really my style. Uh, I'm more of a, a classical uh, Bronze Age, kind of like uh, John Buscema, um, Kurt Swan, uh, or John Byrne that type of style uh, where it has like uh, it's very anatomically correct uh, a lot of feathering uh, really smooth curvy lines stuff like that that's my style but in any case uh, this person uh, wanted to know how how I draw uh, muscles uh, for characters now uh, anybody who's been watching my videos knows that I I like 3d models I use 3d models uh, because uh, 3D models helps me uh, create um, the the right proportions 
and also uh, spatially 3D correctly. Um, and this 3D model also allows me to have dramatic angles. Now for this tutorial though, I'm not going to be going over how to um, create uh, postures or how to set up a, a scene with 3D models. This is more just how I use 3D models to put to draw the anatomy. So, um, so besides the 3D models, I also use uh, photo references. Uh, specifically, I go to Pinterest and I just type, you know, some human anatomy, and this will give me a a more clear view of the human anatomy. Now, you can pick any any particular picture you want, and it doesn't even have to be in the same pose. I just need to know um, what type of muscles are where. And so I'll use this photograph here to give me a rough idea of where the muscles go on my 3D model. And so the first thing I do is um, I can uh, hide the photo for right now, but I put a 3D model onto my canvas. Again, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to review how to position or pose or how to do dynamic posings or uh, I might make a separate video if uh, this one is popular enough I'll, I'll make a separate video on how I choose to do the poses but for right now um, so I put in a 3d model of that I'm going to choose a male for this video um, obviously the female will be different and what I do is I lower the opacity um, it doesn't matter just I just make it light enough so that um, it's not overwhelming to my drawing. And so I go to the raster layer where I want to draw. And the first thing I do for that raster layer is, um, actually I don't do anything really special, I just grab a pin and I start to draw. Now, one of the things that you'll notice um, with uh, Clip Studio Paint's 3D models is, is it, when you move the uh, arms and legs and stuff uh, you don't it does not flex the muscles so one of the things I'm always aware of uh, is how the muscle uh, reacts so if see I got uh, just a T pose right here uh, by default the arms are straight straight down to, on his sides but if you change it to like a T pose here you'll notice that his pictorial muscle is still kind of uh, in this down position here uh, but in reality the muscle will stretch uh, will stretch up so that's that's something you have to be aware of uh, clip studio paints 3d models not not going to um, not going to define that for you um, and so but you can clearly see that the pictorial muscle would be here uh, another thing on the 3D models that I always use as well is the shadows. Um, if you would like to move the shadows to see where the muscles are more defined or, or whatnot, um, that, that's done over here on the left hand side uh, with the applied light source. And you can pretty much move the light so that you can see a better uh, contrast of where the muscles are so that's one thing another tool I use to uh, better define where the muscles are and so what I'm doing here is just I'm just spacing or I'm just uh, outlining uh, where where the basic uh, muscles are on this uh, 3d model now again I, um, for this video to keep it short I'm just going to use the I'm just going to uh, do the torso uh, so and I'm just going to do the front. Uh, I won't. I'll again if this video becomes popular enough uh, that that I might make a series. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll do the back and then the, of course the legs and and the other anatomy. But for the moment, it's just going to be the torso. And so what I'm just doing here is just getting a basic outline of 
where all the muscles are, the, the major muscles. Um, I like to draw where the belly button is, and then um, you can see here that his uh, abdomens are here, 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 here. Now it doesn't have to be perfect. Now one thing here is on the sides here, uh, Clip Studio Paint is not really, uh, it's not that um, specific with the, the muscles. So that's when I go to the photo reference and I can see that um, you have this uh, abdomen muscle here and it's divided like halfway between you have this muscle here and this muscle here. And then when you get to this muscle here, usually what I do is, it's a little bit lower, but it doesn't really matter. You have another muscle here. And then when you get to this muscle, you have this one attaches to the side of it. And then the one where the belly button is, um, you have the, the final, uh, like the love handles, I guess you can call them. And if you want, you can, you can see that I'm splitting it into two. But again, that is specific to this photo reference, which I'm using. Um, again, you can see that Clip Studio Paint, um, if I erase the, uh, if I erase where the, the uh, model is, the belly button is here, but uh, I guess I could have made it more so that it's like, so you have one, two, three, where here you have one, two, and then the belly button. But as you can see from the photo reference, the abdomen actually starts right below the pictorials. So if you wanted to, um, you can actually put one more up here, even though Clip Studio Paint's 3D model doesn't have one there. And so now you're more, uh, it's more on point to the photo reference. And so again, uh, this first abdomen here, halfway to it, you have uh, this little small muscle here and then another small muscle right below it. And then you have these other uh, strands of muscles that come down here this way. So how do we translate that over here to our 3D model? The way I do it is basically wherever the nipple is, uh, if you go from the um, where the clavicle muscle, the bone, clavicle bone, this bone here, or the collarbone, as it's sometimes called, if you draw a line that goes straight like this, uh, connecting the clavicle to the uh, nipple, and then down to where the love handles are, and if this was facing forward, you can see it kind of makes like a, a uh, triangle shape where the point is up here. So we'll do that too. We can. Uh, if you can, going back to our photo reference, the very last one where the belly button is, the navel, um, where you, that's where that muscle is for the, the love handle, I guess you can call it. I don't know that name of that muscle. And so that's what I'll do. And you can see it comes around to about here and you can have two muscles there. That's, that would be this one and this one, right? And so now um, I can, from the clavicle, going back to our 3D model, from the clavicle, you can make a line that comes straight down like this. So the nipple will be somewhere here, but not just that, again, that's where uh, these little muscles that come off the, that are on the side of the abdomen uh, muscles are gonna be. So again, the very top one has two muscles, so I'm gonna draw a line that curves up. So here's one, and then here will be the second one, and then the third one, and then the fourth one here. And then uh, what you'll also see in the 3D, um, the photo reference is that you have these, this muscle here, this is the underneath the arm, uh, kind of, it's actually the muscle that goes to the back this is the the lats. Um, you can 
in our case here, you it won't be in the 3D model. It's not really shown. But what you can do is that you can see that it comes to where the um, the love handles are, and it kind of goes up. I'm going to add one here. It's not on the 3D model, but I'll add one just to um, just to give some uh, make it look more muscular, dynamic, or what have you. Okay, so now that you have that, we can see that. Um, the, where the abdomen was, uh, again, we had these two uh, muscles on the side here, but you can see that on this side of the line here, where we drew for the nipple, we can we can have we have these smaller muscles that attach. Uh, so I just typically go just a little bit past the line this this line here where the line that told me where where the nipple would be and I just uh, curve it up to where the uh, where underneath the arm is so I just go this way like that and then again it's just going to be a little bit uh, past this uh, line the line that told us where the of uh, the nipple was going to be, just and let me zoom in a little closer. So basically here, and you want to touch this where this one starts or ends if you go this way. And so you come in this way like this. So you have this one. Now you have this one, and again you have this one. And that should be it. Now, remember that uh, you had this muscle here, the, the lats. So you can actually come in and draw a line there to, to uh, and then erase here. And that'll give you your, uh, the muscles to uh, your character. Now, it's a bit messy. I understand that, uh, but what I like to do is once I finish drawing the whole model, uh, again, I'm just drawing the torso, uh, but when you finish drawing the whole uh, model, what you want to do, or what I typically do, is I turn off the uh, 3D model, and I turn off the photo reference. Uh, let me get rid of this stuff. And so now, um, typically, my drawing is complete, the whole character, the whole body. And what I typically do is I turn this uh, raster layer into a blue layer, because uh, then I can use it as reference. And what I typically do is I lower the opacity just to make it uh, a little bit lighter, so it's not overwhelming, and I create another raster layer. Now, with this raster layer, what I do is um, I also turn it uh, a reference blue. Let me just draw a line here like that. So the new raster layer is black. The old one underneath is uh, blue, photo reference blue with uh, lowered opacity. But what I typically do is I turn it into a blue, but I don't want to confuse blue and blue, even though this the, the drawing is lighter blue. What I typically do is use the red. So I'll now use uh, the color red from the picker, uh, color picker, and I go back here to where it says layer color. I just hit that little paint bucket and it turns it red. So basically this just makes anything I draw, oh, sorry, go back to the color picker, turn it black. So now anything I draw on this layer, even though my ink says I'm black, anything on the layer, will be red right and so here's where I put in a little bit more more detail um, into the muscles now typically uh, I start with the uh, pictorials and so here's where I start to uh, it's not um, it's not super detailed but it, it's enough information where 
when I start drawing with the black, um, it, it'll I can draw it. So uh, I'm just gonna draw. I'm going to from the from the blue um, drawing that I have. I'm gonna take the information that I that I want. I want the abdomens, of course. I'll keep the the navel as a the nipple, not the nipple, the uh, belly button as reference. There. And so I'm not going to draw this blue line here, but I will. I'll keep the the nipple. Um, sometimes you can look at this and say, "Hmm, the nipple seems a little too close to the sternum or the center of the line." It would probably be more something like this. I don't know. That I'll, that's both uh, artistic choices that you have to make. Uh, now, as far as the the lat. Um, well, let, you know what, let me start. So from the abdomen, we said that halfway here would be one here, one here, one here, and then the love handles here. Okay. And so instead of drawing, uh, well, actually, let's draw these muscles here. So instead of drawing a straight line, uh, what I typically like to do um, with this is I like to curve them to give them a, a feel of of uh, depth or uh, make it seem like it's it's not just a flat surface. It, there, these are like rounded uh, tubular um, muscles, and so the arm would be something like this. And then uh, this kind of to me seems a bit too. Uh, too rounded. Um, what you can do to add a little artistic flair, I guess, is to make it something more slimming. You can like put a little dip there. Uh, again, that's a more artistic choice. It's not uh, something uh, that we saw in our um, photo reference, right? Um, so here, uh, I guess I didn't explain this, uh, the neck too much, but there's the uh, the neck muscles. Hopefully you saw that when I was drawing it. Uh, but when I draw this, the neck muscle here, um, the deltoids, I believe they're called, uh, I don't want to draw a straight line. Usually, and I'll probably do this, it's better left for the black inks. When I do the black inks, it's uh, feather it. Um, I'll explain that when... Uh, I start doing the black inks, but uh, you can of course draw um, other stuff on there. Like uh, again, uh, that's more of a, the rendering part of the drawing. Uh, but yeah. So again, I'm not going to do the arms in this video. Just I'm just doing the torso. So once I have a more clear, uh, defined lines of where I want to put things. Um, also, another thing, if you if you look back at the photo reference, look at the pictorials, you can see that there's these lines here. Uh, if you look at the the big muscle muscle magazines and stuff of the guys working out, uh, you'll you'll see that they have these lines across their their torso. You can actually do that with here uh, with your drawing too, if you you want to draw those really extreme muscular, but Notice that it starts here where the shoulder is, right? So where the, the pictorial meets the shoulder, um, th that's where uh, these muscle strands, they kind of meet at that point and uh, they come here. Now, this part here is actually part of the shoulder, this whole muscle here. So there's no really, there's no real line here. It goes from, uh, the top of the uh, pictorial over down to the shoulder. You can see that here if we go back to our blue, it actually, it's something like, oops, it goes from, actually let's uh, do this. I'm back in the blue uh, line layer. 
you can see that it kind of comes from here and it just goes over to the shoulder. Uh, it, because he has his arm twisted where the bicep is facing up, you can't see really where it comes down. It's You gotta imagine it's wrapped the other way over there, right? So uh, you kind of have that here, right? So where the muscle strands are going to meet is at this point here. And so we'll have these lines come in this way like that. So we can we can do that in our um, in the red. Uh, oops, still in the blue. Okay, here we go. So you can kind of see that we have that there like that. And uh, if you look at our photo reference, uh, you can see that you have one, two, three, four, and five. The fifth one is kind of not at the sternum, but kind of underneath this fourth one here. And you can do that, or or you can just do however many you want, really. It's uh, your drawing. But what this does, in uh, my opinion, is uh, give it a little bit more realism. So you have the one, two, three, uh, and then, the, like I said, the fourth one is right here. And so what I typically, because I do, I do draw these muscles sometimes for like when the character's flexing. Usually when the character's flexing, I, I draw the, uh, the pictorial muscles. Uh, but Okay, so what I did there was I made this one smaller and as it gets into the middle, they get larger or wider. And then as it comes down here, it gets uh, smaller again or thinner. And what you do is to really emphasize it is you, at the instead of drawing a straight line down the sternum, you draw these curves uh, on the pictorials just to give it make it look like uh, it has uh, solid roundness, it's a more a curvature. Uh, it gives it a more three dimensional feel to the to the uh, drawing instead of just drawing a straight because typically. When you see straight flat lines, um, there's no depth to it. There's no dimension. Uh, and so again, uh, I'm gonna lower the blue lines. And then once I've uh, finished all that um, with the red lines, kind of, it, it's it's not a really defined line yet. It's just more just sloppy, but yet more detailed than the blue line. Uh, what I do is I lower that opacity as well. Um, make it just slightly more than the blue. You can actually take the blue down really low and then just have the red um, kind of overpowering it but not too much. And so now this last layer, I do the, the last layer. This will be when I put down the black lines or what I call the finish lines. Um, this will be, um, again, this is more how uh, how you do your art style. Um, Man, that red, I want to take it down just a little bit more. Because I want it to be just barely visible. Uh, again, uh, as I said, I'm more of a, uh, a Bronze Age kind of style. Uh, so, and uh, I don't know what to, what to say about um, your typical style. Um, your style is, is your own. you got to... Uh, kind of discover that um, on your own from drawing. Just uh, the more you draw, you'll discover that um, you're more uh, that the way you draw what's what's easier to you. What you'll discover is that uh, that'll pretty much define your style. It's basically uh, whatever's easier for you to draw. A character or uh, your your comic or whatever you're drawing so that actually becomes your style um, I've from my experience uh, I was a huge fan of the 90s comics with Todd McFarlane uh, Jim Lee Rob Liefeld they had that very uh, you know extreme uh, 90s style if you're familiar with it and it had um, a lot of cross hatching. I, for the life of me, uh, tried to learn that 
and it, my drawings were just not coming. It didn't flow, um, if that makes sense to you. Uh, it just, to me, they, they, um, it didn't look natural. It didn't look, uh, and I mean natural in the way that, you know, Rob Liefeld makes it look. You know, he, when Rob Liefeld does cross hatching, I mean, it, it looks nice. It looks very fun. Um, and that's because, you know, that's his style. That's his, it's like a fingerprint. And so, but that, that doesn't, uh, that doesn't work for me. And so that's typically what you have to do is you have to find, uh, your style. Um, and that only comes from just, uh, drawing and see what works for you. Uh, again, me, uh, when I got into comics, I never thought, uh, I always saw the Bronze Age artists, you know, like John Byrne and stuff as the old fashioned type, you know, I was like, oh, that's because when I, again, when I got into comics, it was the nineties and, and, uh, Todd McFarlane and Rob Liefeld and all those image guys, they were dominating. Uh, and so cross hatching extreme stuff was, was really the, the dominant, uh, art form or art style. But, you know, even that kind of uh, died out. So, you know, you got to find your own art style, but just drawing um, and, and just figuring things out. Just, you know, just try new things. Uh, experiment. Um, so anyways, um, so what I did here is, uh, I'm, so I'm using the red lines as a guide. Now, again, uh, you'll notice that I don't completely draw... Um, I don't connect the lines, right? So like this line, if you look at this line here, it's not connected to this line here, even though you see the red line, it is, it's like one piece, but, um, but to get the, give the illusion that this is like one skin, you know, it's not separate. It's, they're not separate pieces put together. It's one piece and with the skin over it, uh, you draw this, this absence here and that kind of, the human mind, people's uh, minds will will connect it in their mind, but uh, by leaving it blank here, it kind of like means that it's one piece. It's connected to this piece over here. So, uh, and again, that comes with just um, with your style, with your practice. Um, you have to pretty much do that. Another thing you'll notice is that. Um, even though, the, the, so we know this is the shoulder here, and this is the pictorial. Um, if I left it uh, without any kind of separation here, it looks like one flat piece. So to, to make this, um, if I can go to the red, to make this one piece where this is, I'm drawing the curvature of the muscles by using these curved lines, and then drawing, uh, actually it would probably go this way, by drawing this curved, curvature here. Oh, so th this is the pictorial. This is the shoulder, the deltoid, I think it's called. Um, or I don't know what, what the shoulder muscles are called, but you know the shoulder muscles. So you have this separation here, but I don't want to draw a, a line like this because uh, to me, drawing a solid line implies there's a separation. Like there's it's two pieces, two separate pieces being butted up against each other. Uh, so again, for my style, what I do is I do the feathering, which is, this is what you would see in the old school guys, uh, the golden age or the, uh, bronze age. Um, and even, you know, um, even for the shoulder muscles, uh, there's, there's a separate muscle, the shoulder, if we go back to our photo reference, you see there's, this muscle here, there's this muscle here, and then there's this bigger one here, and then behind behind this one, there's another one back here, but you can't see it because it's on the back side. But in any case, um, so I didn't even do that, um, but you can do that now if you want. So, and that, I mean, again, that's, it adds another level of, of uh, I guess, realism or, or depth to your drawing. And so, but even that, I, I wouldn't draw it as a solid line. Um, 
again because I have that old school type of I would just leave it as feathering like that okay uh, I guess we can draw the navel I don't know whatever uh, again with the abdomen uh, most of the times you would see people draw like straight up lines they'll draw pretty much the abdomens like that to me the again uh, drawing straight lines uh, really separate the two pieces like they're separate pieces so again I, I like to do feathering I like to feather because uh, by drawing by by not connecting the line gives in my mind I don't know maybe you, you think differently it gives the impression that uh, that it's not the same piece but it um, but they are connected you know um, it's not that they're separate uh, pieces together they're actually uh, they're the same piece um, but you know not the same piece you know what I mean it's I don't know again it's this is all style when it comes to rendering this is all style you you, you kind of have to figure out um, your style now here uh, I might just draw a straight line here like this or I might feather it just all depends uh, artistic style now these parts here I do kind of draw a, a straight line but I don't connect it to the bottom part of the pictorial I just I leave it open here and I don't sometimes I don't touch the I don't touch the 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 up uh, the line that goes above. See, so the, none of these lines are touching. And then in the case of the um, when it gets down here to the love handles, I kind of switch it up and I go I feather the other way because I kind of want to draw. I want the love handles to have this this type of shape here. I want it to go uh, this way, kind of like a tube going this way. If you can see the curvature and so I'll feather it in that way you know to show that to show the the uh, the curvature of the muscle you know and then when you come down here you can see I'll, I'll go this way now right and um, when it comes to this uh, when it get, gets down to where the love handles meets the the lats from the back, um, I will close it off. Uh, typically, so for this particular pose, I would it would probably this will all probably be black, and so I will uh, draw solid lines here, like that. I'll draw the pictorial. Finish drawing that, and so. Um, I'll leave that um, as such and what I'll do is just I'll grab the paint bucket I'm sure all that was closed in and so that will be the the muscles there again I'm not drawing the arms so but I'm just finishing that up this would be black too you know but oh well actually let me let me go over that because uh, again, I'm not I'm not going to show you how I draw the arms. I'll probably save that for a different video, but you can see that I would have that also black um, and and maybe fade into the light, you know, but um, one other thing that I do use is um, how, how do I how do I show the separation of the 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 muscle of the arm and the lats and what I do, what I like to do is, and I found this out by just uh, drawing over and over, is you can actually cut into the black and uh, give it a more, um, uh, so it's kind of the reverse of, so instead of feathering with black lines, you feather with white lines. But what I typically, and I don't use white, I use this 
option here on the left hand side you see the black you have the white but then you have transparency this pretty much turns your pin into an eraser and you cut into the black so you can feather uh, the same way you do with inks but you do it with the transparency color and in any case um, uh, so now the other thing I do is when I have a so you see the shadow and you see the light um, I don't typically like to see a solid uh, black and white really harsh solid black to white I mean in some cases it's okay but in this case I wanted to show like a gradual fade so I'll just draw these uh, tapered uh, lines you know using the the pressure sensitive pin you know just draw and this is just to show that hey it's going from black to more grayish and then to solid white um, so that that's that's the most you will see me hatching um, but again um, I don't like uh, another like I don't like again this is really solid and then this is really white I found out through just drawing a lot if you were to draw uh, go back to the transparency pin and just cut into uh, cut into the into the black like um, it's pretty much what it is is it's this black line but as the black line gets into the shadow you can't see it so what I like to do is I just go in reverse and I draw a, a white line there and you can no that doesn't work for me maybe smaller something like that you know you cut into the black but typically that's um, that's where I I stop there so um, that's pretty much um, how I draw uh, uh, anatomy using 3d models from uh, uh, clip studio paint oh and again uh, you can turn off the references and see see uh, how's it going uh, a lot of times this stuff looks better when when you have the 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 underdrawing I don't know why it does that but it's very clean um, uh, now uh, you can you can actually continue rendering uh, this drawing because you can kind of see it's it's uh, in some cases it looks better with the with the underdrawing and that's because uh, rendering um, you can add more rendering to it to make it uh, more three-dimensional by let me just draw a new layer uh, you can draw the, the shadows on each individual muscle I'm not good at this um, again this is uh, this will be up to you and your art style uh, so it just depends on what kind of art style you like um, I don't know for me it just I would leave it like that and I would use color to uh, to define the muscles or just leave it like that if I'm drawing a black and white drawing but in any case uh, I hope you kind of got an idea of how I draw muscles uh, on a character using 3d models uh, so basically you start from here and um, you start from the 3d model and using a photo reference to see where the muscles line up where they connect you then draw a um, a blue line of you know just map out uh, where the major muscles are at and then once you have that uh, lower the you can turn off your 3d model and then um, with a a different layer in the red you can pretty much add more defined uh, boundaries of where your muscles are you can even draw these curved lines to help you to see the form of the muscle and then lower the opacity of the red and you could probably even take off the blue line and then create your final uh, ink line and then uh, put in more detail uh, the final lines uh, set them down where you want and again this final rendering it just all, it all depends on your art style you have to just draw and figure out what um, what your art style is and typically the way you find your art style is it's what what is the most easiest 
um, for you to draw? What is the most natural way that you draw that comes out? Uh, because if you try to copy somebody else's art style, like if you want to draw like Jim Lee, and you try to copy Jim Lee, you might find yourself very um, frustrated with drawing because that's just not your natural way of drawing. Um, you you have to kind of experiment with that. Um, but learning the basics, you know, drawing shapes and, and shadows, I mean, that's always good. Um, but again, I like to use 3D models um, and photo references to line up stuff to, to get a more accurate uh, drawing. Anyways, um, I hope uh, I hope you learned something. Uh, if you did, uh, hit the thumbs up. And uh, if you like this type of content, make sure you subscribe. And if you'd like to see more of these anatomy videos, hey, uh, leave down in the comments what you think, uh, uh, wh what are your thoughts, um, and uh, yeah, I'll try to respond as much as I can. As I said, I don't have too much free time anymore, but um, if this gets a, uh, a good response, I will continue. I will, you know, draw arms, uh, and then the back. I know people have trouble with the back muscles, uh, and then heads, and and all other types of uh, what I use 3D models uh, to help me draw. And uh, I also would, this is pretty much the basic stuff, you know, to draw static front view of a person. There's also much more you can do with 3D models where you can, instead of drawing a stiff character punching a straight forward, with 3D models you can uh, twist and and move you can pose the figure so it's more natural and it'll make your uh, drawings more realistic uh, naturally um, so if you're into that again leave comments that you want to see more subscribe hit the thumbs up uh, all that good stuff uh, so yeah thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one